come up with something that you know for certain is going to be a bad time, but instead of backing out of it like a normal person would, you realize it would be a good idea for YouTube videos? Because that's what this is. Hello and welcome to the first episode of Disturbing Letterbox Roulette, where I basically watch at random a random disturbing horror movie from my letterbox list and, um, you know, suffer for your entertainment. Now, I know what you may be thinking, and yes, I'm probably gonna regret this. But before I can get into any of that regret, let's go over the very quick and simple little rules that follow this torturous little game I'm gonna be playing. I have a lovely little list on Letterboxd that's made up of disturbing movies from other lists on Letterboxd, articles, Reddit icebergs, and YouTube channels, and all the movies have been randomly numbered. And all I'm gonna be doing is getting a number from random.org and then watching the movie associated with that number and talking about it. Now there are some rules to this game. First off, if the movie selected is the second or third in a series, I have to at least watch up to that second or third movie or opt to watch all of them in one go. Can't bitch out, it's up to her all only. And that's truly all there is to it. So without further ado, uh, let's skip to the pain and find out what we're gonna be watching. We are watching 179. I don't know what that is and I'm slightly horrified. And 179 is Green Room. Oh, I'm actually kind of excited about this one. <laughs> so I have watched some of the movies on this list already and Green Room is actually one of them. It's one I actually tried showing my parents because whenever I like a movie, I tried to show quite literally everyone I know that movie and my mom didn't like it because she didn't like everything that was going on in it. But I personally really do like Green Room. So um, I am very excited for this rewatch and to tell you about how disturbing it is and all that. So um, I'm gonna go get to that and I'll see you in a bit. Three weeks later. So let me start by saying that if you've ever wanted a horror movie where the main characters felt like real people and made choices that you think you would probably make in a situation like we're gonna be talking about, you definitely have to see this fucking movie then. This is like perfect for you. Green Room is a movie about a down and out punk band called The Ain't Rights, which consists of Pat, Reese, Sam, and Tiger going to a skinhead bar to perform after their last gig was canceled. My last show at the Muni Center didn't end well. Uh, lots of vomit, some fecal matter. Doing so because they desperately need the money to continue their tour and even to get home. As seen from them bike riding to siphon gas and due to them only getting like six bucks a person from their last gig they were able to get. <laughs> But hey. We got rice and beans. However, at their set at the skinhead bar, which they iconically start with Nazi punks fuck off. Nazi punks fuck off! Arguably braver than the average Twitter activist with that. Pat goes back into the green room to get Sam's phone after their set, and he finds the main band, Cowcatcher, and two girls he saw in the crowd. One of the girls, who we later learn is named Amber, pleading for Sam to get help, and the other, who we later learn is named Emily, with a knife in her head on the ground. Which, for those at home, is not where a knife should be. Pat calls the cops, but his phone gets stabbed by the manager, Gabe, and the bouncer, Big Justin, puts them back into the green room to hold them until the owner gets called and tells them what to do. 911 recalls them, and Gabe answers the call on behalf of Pat, saying that there has been a stabbing. Which sounds promising in theory, but come on guys, this is a fucking thriller. We are here to be thrilled. We can't let the protagonist get out that easily. In response to the police coming, Gabe gives money to Skinhead to stab another Skinhead, so when the cops get there, they deal with that, thinking that that is the stabbing that was reported. Spoiler alert, the owner Darcy is not gonna let a random punk band witnessing one of their boys murder a chick just leave no problem despite the cops not knowing anything. Now this is the point where the movie kind of kicks into high gear and shit starts going down. And I get it, it is a little bit of a slow start to get here, but trust me, it does not stop once it gets going. And it does not hold back from showing you just how fucked this band is. Because while the band is trying to figure out a way out while also fully disarming Big Justin and trying to figure out some kind of plan, Darcy clears out the venue by turning off the lights and telling everyone they tripped their main, so everyone needs to go home. Hell, free drinks in two to four. <laughs> Gives Cowcatcher bad heroin to kill them, which you learn about later. Really have to stay away from that dope. It's a bad batch during the rounds. And begins assembling a group of Nazis and some dogs to get rid of the Ain't Rights. And all of that is for a reason, and not just to torture them. They're getting dogs brought in because they have a beware of dog sign and found the band siphon in their car. They also make sure to tell the guys that are going in to kill the band to use knives and not guns. And all of this is because Darcy is meticulously planning on getting rid of the band and making it look like the kids came out onto their property to steal gas and they were killed for doing that because they got caught. Dude is full on planning the shit to a T so him and his fellow Nazis can get out of the scot free and probably more so so Darcy can keep his bar and the drug lab underneath it. You wanna cook crystal meth? 
While on the other hand, the band is just trying to get out, choosing to rush Big Justin for his gun, and the members debating on who should even hold the gun due to Sam's discomfort, and eventually trying to break whatever they can to get out, and truly, that chaos is very much a good thing for this film. Because be serious with me for a minute. As much as we may love the badass survivors who kick ass in movies like this, do you really think that's what like 99% of people would do in a situation like this? Exactly, they wouldn't. So the band's chaotic and at times quote unquote stupid behavior is at least an honest betrayal of people caught in something they were not ever prepared to be caught up in. Because I don't know about you, but I for one am not trying to figure out how I'm going to escape a green room with Nazis trying to kill me for seeing a dead body on a good old fun Saturday night. And speaking of stupid behavior, Darcy at this point convinces Pat to hand over the gun while keeping the bullets with the obvious threat of, you're an out of town band with an unregistered gun. What am I supposed to do? Am I within my rights to intervene? Should I kick down the door and start shooting? And while Pat tries doing that, the Nazis around Darcy, which they couldn't see, spring forward to go after Pat, absolutely lacerating the shit out of his arm to the point his hand is basically falling off. This shit's actually kind of gruesome. This sets off a domino effect of Reese choking up Big Justin until he dies, which shakes up everyone, and the band at least now knowing for sure that Darcy is actually trying to kill them. Not the friendly neighborhood Nazi after all. As if it wasn't obvious by the police not coming in, but hey, people reacting to an insane situation in a dumb manner kind of makes sense here. With this new knowledge of Darcy wanting them actually dead, they start to try to escape any way they can. Eventually finding a room under the green room that's a hidden drug lab, but it is locked from the outside, of course. But at least Tiger grabs some duct tape from the room to bandage up Pat's literally barely attached hand, so not all hope is lost for the one-armed wonder after all. At this point, Reese is tired of sitting around and being clearly easy targets, and everyone gets ready to run and fight however they can, but first, Pat gets to say a really emotional and impactful speech for them. Pat, you're done too. Sorry, man, we gotta go. That's okay. Or not, I guess, I guess Pat can go fuck himself. Damn. But hey, apparently Sam asking for everyone's Desert Island band one final time is more important than that speech, which really isn't important to note, but it kind of is for the ending scene, so. Sam whips the tube light out the door and everyone's surprised to see that no one's actually out there waiting for them. But as they start to make their way out of the room, essentially operating on an every man for themselves scenario, it becomes very apparent that that scenario is not going to go so well after a dog is let loose into the building, which... <laughs> Surprisingly, Sam with only a fire extinguisher to defend herself, Pat with pretty much one arm, and a racist whose ankle is being used as a chew toy don't actually die, and in the process learn that doggies don't like mic feedback. What can I say? You win some, you lose some, you lose some friends to Nazis and the dogs. Say la vie. So at this point, the final three are locked back up in the green room and Darcy sends in men to go and finish the job. One of them being Daniel, who's the cousin of the guy that got them this gig in the first place, who mind you is like rearing to get inside because he finds out from Gabe that the dead body in the building is actually his girlfriend, Emily. So needless to say, he is ready to fucking go. And when he and the other Nazi he was sent in with get into the room, Daniel asking for who specifically did it because he definitely wants to kill them. Amber breaks the news to him and clears up as to what the catalyst was for all of this. Worm found out that she was leaving, but she didn't say that it was with you. Meat Grinder. That song was their cue. And arguably, a second watch of this movie is just so worth it because you start to realize just how much all this is hinted at from the beginning. I'm not gonna get too into it whatsoever right now because I still want you to go see the movie and see all these things for yourself if you choose to see it and all that. And because I don't want this video to be an hour long. But it's quite literally hinted at from the discussions with Tad at the beginning and Daniel's behavior when they all meet for the first time. A movie? Considered disturbing? With rewatch value? Color me impressed. That is arguably the most shocking thing about this movie. But as we find Find this out, Darcy finds out as well, and needless to say, Daniel is now also a target from Darcy and his boys because not only did Darcy find his go bags, but a bat Daniel was supposed to get rid of. With Daniel joining Pat, Sam, and Amber, they leave the green room with the promise of getting a shotgun from the bar Daniel worked at, which of course is super pro- <laughs> Too slow. Or not, okay. Pat manages to slice at the Nazi with a shotgun's neck with a machete and Pat and Sam follow behind Amber with a newly acquired shotgun outside. Resulting in Amber getting shot in the leg and dropping the shotgun, Sam picking up the shotgun and shooting the dog running at her, only wounding the dog, which... Oh! Oh, Sam! Oh! 
And the final two scurry back into the green room. So the plays so far have been quite simple. Um, walk out with absolutely no strategy and die by the bar, or try to escape to the storage room and die outside through the window. Run back in when you can from pretty much, you know, any direction and all that. Acquire a new member, so now we got three. Pretend that's a three, because good lord, I can't squiggle around right now. Um, leave and immediately lose a number. A num number? Another one by the bar, and then, you know, scurry outside, and lose another one to a dog down there, scurry back in, and basically what I'm saying is these strats aren't stratting. At this point, Darcy knows he's gonna be fine, and sends in a cleanup crew to finish the job with guns, and for Gabe to clean up like the little trad wife he is. Meanwhile, Pat and Amber are just kinda coping, and we finally get to hear Pat's inspiring powwow he wanted to say before the first attempt at leaving due to Amber insisting on it. And based on what happens after this, Reese, my good pal, my buddy, you should have just let Pat finish his fucking speech. You might not have 10 new holes in your body if you did. Basically, Pat recalls a paintball game he went to where he and his friends were going against buff-ass, hard-ass military dudes. And the reason they didn't get slaughtered during the last round, unlike the previous rounds, is because one of his friends just said, fuck it, go crazy, go stupid, and wiped out the vets by himself just running and gunning. And you'll never guess what tactics Pat and Amber decide on as a last-minute Hail Mary. Sure you won't. It's completely and utterly not obvious at all. The last 30 minutes of the movie are dedicated to Amber and Pat going absolutely batshit and being crazy to out-strategize the Nazis, which actually somehow works. Got him. Totally. Flattered ass of that motherfucker. They hold Gabe at gunpoint and eventually let him go free to call the cops while they go to Darcy's to finish things. Which of course they do. I mean, shit's been rough enough for the Ain't Rights. Did you really think they were gonna let Nazis win on top of that? Nah, baby, they got Pat's speech, two guns, and the power of just collective trauma of seeing your friends die in front of you on their side. And while waiting for the police, the movie ends in the best way it can. With that callback I mentioned a while ago that you wouldn't think's important, but here we are. I know what it is. What, what is? A desert island band. Tell somebody who gives a shit. And that is Green Room. Well, it's not all of Green Room. If we wanted to cover all of Green Room, I could at least spend an hour here talking about it, and at least 30 minutes dedicated to Amber's shoelaces and lace coat, and how all of that just fucking ties everything together. Here on out, not a single name gets added unless they have red laces. Which, yes, lace coat is something I looked up and made note of Amber's laces specifically, as I was essentially losing my mind over trying to figure out if she viewed herself as anti-racist or as a white supremacist, because apparently I am colorblind. These are the things you notice on a second watch. I'm not even kidding. It is so worth it. <laughs> but this is just the gist of Green Room, with what highlights what I believe to be what people would find the most disturbing in this movie. The Nazis, the gore and brutality, and how realistic the band members are. So with all that being said, do I find The Green Room to be a disturbing movie? No, not really. <laughs> like, yes, you'll be wondering what's gonna happen next throughout most of it, given the clear difference between Darcy and the Nazi's strategic planning and the band's gung-ho attempts at escape and survival, especially with the arguably most formidable band members being the two first to die. But unless you're squeamish with gore or that freaked out over skinheads and how real this may feel, this really won't disturb you by any means. Essentially, there was no real factor from this that stuck with me and made me say, this is so fucked. Instead, it made me wanna show everyone I love this movie yet again. But hey, at least I can say that this movie is a very good movie, a very well-made movie, and honestly really rewarding to watch a second time. Like, the movie had me having mini Leonardo DiCaprio pointing at the TV moments every time I saw something that, like, hinted as to what's going on. So needless to say, I was still very into it on a second watch, and even though I knew what was gonna happen. But anyways, so was Green Room disturbing? No. Is Green Room good? Absolutely, 100%, no questions asked, go fucking watch it. But that's gonna do it for this little disturbing roulette video on Green Room. Kinda actually thankful I just got Green Room for the first episode of this because um, at least I got to dip my toes in the water and not just get thrown headfirst into the fucking pool and the pool being August Underground or some shit. But thank you guys so much for watching. I've been wanting to do this for like months. When I was like gone, I was just planning this and adding shit to my letterbox constantly just for this moment. So I am very happy I finally get to do this. <laughs> I'm very giddy over being forcibly um, made to watch disturbing movies and talk to you about them. That is something, I'll tell you what. <laughs>
I'm thinking about doing this at least once a month so I have time to watch the movie and make a script for it while also having time to make other videos I really want to make. That controversial game video is coming, I swear. <laughs> but until the next video, try to stay away from skinhead bars owned by Professor X, which arguably shouldn't be too hard to do, but you never know. And with that, I'll see you guys later. Bye!